Hey groups, good to be with you guys all again this week. I hope you've enjoyed going through um, this series so far like I have. Um, we've looked at Genesis. We've been looking through Genesis. And this week, uh, Eric spoke on Job. And if you didn't get a chance to check out the message this weekend, you're probably wondering, why Job? I thought we were in Genesis now. Why are we pulling Job into this? Um, actually, if we look at uh, the way we're going through the Bible, we're, we're trying to go through it in order of when it would have happened. And Job most likely actually did happen in that time frame after, or right around Abraham, really. And what we find in Job um, is this story where it's a guy who's very wealthy and has had a lot of good things going on. Um, and Satan enters the picture again. And what we know about Satan is when he enters the picture, he stirs things up and things don't go well. Um, and he approaches God and he says, the only reason Job uh, loves you and obeys you is because great things have happened in his life. And God allows Satan to bring some destruction in. Um, and what we find in Job is that uh, he loses all of his, really all of his possessions, right? His houses, his livestock, um, everything around him goes away. Um, and not only that, but there's death in all of his children. All of his kids die in a tragic accident. And Satan brings just this realm of destruction into Job's life. But what we find in this story of Job is that we see that in this, um, we can still trust God's sovereignty even when things don't go our way or don't go like we had planned. Um, one moment that I love in the story of Job is when um, Job sees God, right? He, he sees him in a new way towards the end of the book. And he all of a sudden realizes everything that's happened in his life kind of diminishes a bit because he, he sees God and he sees something that matters even way more than what does here on earth. So it's such a good story. I hope um, you were able to spend some time in it this week. Uh, we're going to jump right into questions. Kids, if you um, are in the room, there are some kids' questions on the sheet. Um, adults, why don't you run them through those, and then we'll get started with adult questions. Question number one, and we're looking back to the challenge from last week and checking in to see how you guys did with it. How did you have the opportunity to stand alone? Question number two, when you think back to this past year, 2021, um, are there things that didn't meet your expectations? And you're thinking, Matt, everything didn't meet my expectations, right? Some of us live in that world. Um, what are some of those unmet expectations and what reaction did you have coming out of that? I want you to start in this next one by reading Job 2, 1 through 6, um, and then talk about this. Why do you think God included this glimpse behind the curtain, right? We see um, God and God and Satan's conversation, this, this glimpse behind the curtain. Why, why do we see that? Why do you think that happens? And does it bother you that it says, have you considered my servant Job? Right, God says to Satan, have you considered him? Right, what, what does that do to you? Question number four. Um, and this, in context-wise, this is after everything has happened to Job. He's got sores on him. He's sitting there in just the ashes of what his life was. And his wife says, why don't you curse God? Um, read that out of Job 2, 7 through 10, and then ask these questions. Why do people blame God when circumstances are not as they wish? And are the ones who blame God the ones who are walking with him, typically.
For question number five, um, really, I want to take a quick snippet of of Job and the response of his friends. If you got a chance to read through his responses, we'll actually find when Job's friends come on the scene, they're actually really helpful, I think. They come and they just sit with Job and they're silent for seven days and seven nights. And I think sometimes that is the most helpful way to grieve with people is to just sit with them. There may not be words of comfort, but your presence matters way more than anything else. Um, But what we find after those seven days is Job's friends start to speak, and they speak very badly, really. They start saying things that are not helpful. Um, They actually start asking Job what he did wrong to deserve these things. Um, And I think that's such an interesting mindset, and I think it's a mindset that we as a culture have too. Right, that we believe that bad things should happen to bad people. Right, we want that that we expect really, and good things are going to happen to good people. And yet, that's not what Scripture tells us. We're told in Scripture um, that it rains on the just and unjust alike. That means that good things are going to happen to good people, and good things are also going to happen to bad people and vice versa. Like bad things are going to happen to good people and bad people alike. It doesn't, it, there's no relationship there between good things and bad things happening. They're just, the, it's going to rain on the just and unjust alike. And here's the question in this. How do we as Christians cope with the understanding of that? That good things are going to happen to bad people and bad things are going to happen to good people. How do we as Christians respond to that? The challenge for this week, and it's actually one that I want you to process in your mind over the of over the course of the next week. Um, some of you and some of us um, are in seasons of grief. You're in seasons of devastation. Um, there's things, unexpected heartache, right? There's things that happen in our lives and we, we wonder why. Why do these bad things happen to me? Um, and where is God in it? Right, Some of you have gone through seasons of that. And in Eric's message, he spoke that many of the conversations he's had that have, where he's seen people walk hard roads, um, if they have a relationship with God, more often than not, they come out with a stronger relationship with God because of that refining process. That Something hard has happened, but God creates something beautiful out of those moments. Um, what I want you to think about over this next week in this challenge is where has that happened in your life? And maybe you're in the refining process and you haven't seen it yet, but maybe start looking for where God could show up. If you've got some extra time and want want to spend some more time in the Word of God, uh, the Digging Deeper section is great this week. We actually look at, I want to give you the illustration that we, you know, when there is, when you drop a vase on the ground and it shatters into pieces and you try to glue it together, there's always holes and there's always cracks. And even if you glue it all together really nice, if you put a light inside of it, it's going to shine through, right? And it actually makes the vase pretty beautiful when you try to get the light through those cracks and those and those wear marks. Um, something beautiful can come out of something that is sometimes so demolished, right? And we're going to look at another story in the Bible that I'm excited for uh, to look into. If you got time, check that out because what I love about the story of God and the story of the Bible Um, is that God so often uh, brings beauty from ashes. And I hope that you can see that in your lives and we'll um, introduce another story if you got time. But otherwise, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week. I hope you guys all have a great week.